Hello, this is Mike Bomick with Bomick Software. Today, I'd like to give you a tour of the new snapshot functionality that we're introducing in Carbon Copy Cloner 5. Before I dive in, though, I think there are probably a lot of people wondering, what is a snapshot? The Apple file system is a new file system that Apple introduced in macOS High Sierra. One of the features of this new file system is support for file system snapshots. A file system snapshot is a read-only copy of a volume frozen in time. When you create a snapshot, you capture the state of every single file on that disk in the state that it's in at that very moment. As you delete files and change files, that snapshot will retain the state of those files in that previous state. Later on, if you've accidentally deleted a file or made modifications that you don't like, you can go back to that snapshot and restore older versions of your files. When you combine snapshots with CCC bootable backups, we can take that a step further, and you can restore older versions of the operating system. So suppose you apply an OS update, and a few hours later, you realize that things have been working really poorly since you applied that update. You can boot from your CCC backup, and then you can restore the system to its previous state from an earlier snapshot. One other aspect of snapshots that's particularly appealing in regard to your backup strategy is that these are read-only copies of your volume. Not only is it impossible for third-party software to modify the content of those snapshots, but it's also not possible to delete those snapshots without a special entitlement granted by Apple. What that means is that malware and ransomware can't delete your snapshots. And because these snapshots are read-only, when you mount it, nobody can make changes to it. So if you were somehow affected by ransomware and it started encrypting your files, you could remove the ransomware, then restore your files from the snapshot. Now that we know what snapshots are, let's discuss what snapshots are not. Snapshots are not a direct replacement for a backup, they're an augmentation to your backup strategy. Suppose you have snapshot support on your startup disk and you've been making regular snapshots, but then one day your startup disk completely fails. All of the snapshots in the world aren't going to bring your data back because when that disk failed, the snapshots are gone as well. To create a true backup, you really need to have your data backed up to a separate hard drive for redundancy. Another thing to keep in mind when establishing your backup strategy is that snapshots are limited to APFS formatted volumes on macOS High Sierra. Your startup disk is probably APFS formatted, but your backup disk may still be formatted with Apple's legacy format. We're not advocating that you go out and reformat your backup disk. You can actually leverage snapshots on either the source or the destination, and I'll demonstrate how that works in a moment. Now that we know a little bit more about snapshots, let's take a look at how we can enable snapshot support in Carbon Copy Cloner 5. Snapshots are managed on a per volume basis in CCC. When you select an APFS formatted volume as a source or a destination to your backup task, CCC will automatically enable snapshot support on that volume. If you would prefer that CCC do not automatically enable snapshot support on your APFS volumes, you can open the Preferences window and uncheck this box to change that behavior. If you're upgrading from a previous version of CCC, then you may have tasks that specify APFS formatted volumes for which snapshot support has not yet been enabled. To enable snapshot support on a volume, click on that volume in the sidebar. Here in the Disk Center, we can see information about your disks, including a list of snapshots that are present on that volume, snapshots created either by CCC or Time Machine. This is also where we specify whether or not snapshot support is enabled. Simply click the toggle button here to enable or disable snapshot support. This is also where we specify our snapshot retention policy. By default, CCC will keep one snapshot per hour for the past day, one snapshot per day for the past month, then weekly snapshots for as long as free space permits. By default, CCC will start removing the oldest snapshots when free space is less than 30 gigabytes. If you would like to use a different retention schedule for this particular volume, click on the Customize button and then enter in your custom values here. One example where you would want to specify a different retention policy is suppose you have an APFS source and an APFS destination volume. In that case, we really don't need to keep weeks and months and months worth of snapshots on both volumes. It's sufficient to have, say, uh, a week's worth of snapshots on the source volume and then a, a longer retention policy for the snapshots on the destination volume. 
In another scenario, suppose that your destination volume is not yet formatted as APFS because it's an HDD and not an SSD. And in that case, maybe we would want to have a more refined retention policy on the source. Uh, likewise, if you don't have a lot of free space on a particular volume, you might not want to have lots and lots of snapshots. There is one exception to CCC's default retention policy, and that's for your startup disk. On the startup disk, we want to avoid creating lots of snapshots and consuming lots of space because bad things happen if your startup disk fills up. So on the startup disk, we'll only keep hourly snapshots for the past day and daily snapshots for the past seven days. Beyond that, we'll delete all of the oldest snapshots. There's one other thing that we do for the startup disk. We, uh, we maintain a disk space monitor on the startup disk. If free space drops below five gigabytes on the startup disk at any time, CCC will start deleting its oldest snapshots until we get above that 5 gigabyte threshold. Okay, at this point we have snapshots enabled on our source and destination volume. So next I'd like to take a look at the mechanics of a backup task to see exactly how CCC leverages those snapshots during the backup task. So here I have my daily backup task. Normally it would run on schedule, but I'm going to go ahead and run it manually, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, now, what's going to happen at the beginning is going to happen too quickly to see, so I'll explain what's going to happen. Uh, before we begin the task, CCC will create a snapshot of the source volume, if that's an APFS volume. And we do that even if snapshots aren't enabled on the source, and if they're not enabled on the source, we discard it at the end of the task. But by creating that snapshot, and using that as the source for the backup task, we have a read-only volume that captures all of the files on that volume at that very moment in time. So throughout the course of the backup, we don't have to worry about anybody making changes to the files on the source while we're copying them. Next, CCC will apply the snapshot retention policy to the source, again, if snapshots are enabled on that volume. So it'll go ahead and, and thin out the snapshots on that volume and if we don't have enough free space to meet our free space policy, it'll delete the oldest snapshots. Next, if we have the safety net feature enabled, CCC will create a snapshot of the destination volume, again, if it's an APFS volume. After creating the safety net snapshot on the destination, CCC will apply the snapshot retention policy of the destination volume and thin snapshots on that volume. And then again, if we haven't met our free space requirement, at the end of snapshot thinning, it will go ahead and delete the oldest snapshots on that volume. Once we've created that snapshot and thin snapshots, CCC will proceed to copy files, and then at the very end of the backup task, it will create one more snapshot on the destination, and that's going to be our backup snapshot. So at this point, we've created it, see it happened very quickly. We created our snapshots on the source and the destination, and we can see those if we click on the volumes in the sidebar. So we can see here we created a new snapshot, and you can see this little green dot here shows that that snapshot is currently mounted. If we right click here, we can show it in the finder, and you can see that this is a read-only volume, so it's not possible to make changes to this volume. So likewise, if we click on our destination volume, we can see that we've got that snapshot created here, and this is a safety net snapshot. Safety net snapshot is something that you would use to restore files uh, that were deleted from the destination. Now, there's a big difference between the safety net snapshot and the backup snapshot that's created at the end of the task. Functionally, they're identical, they're, they're both snapshots. But by creating that snapshot at the beginning of the task before we make any changes to that volume, we've captured the state of the destination. So if you picked the wrong volume by accident in your CCC backup task and started the task, and you didn't realize the mistake until it was too late, that's okay, we've got the safety net snapshot, and if you needed to, you could click here on the restore button, and you could restore your files from that safety net snapshot. If you wanted to restore an older version of your file, though, uh, if you've used Safety Net in the past, you might be used to using it for restoring older versions of files, but that's not what the Safety Net is really for. If you want to retrieve an older version of a file, you would go to a backup snapshot. 
and this is a backup snapshot. Okay, so it looks like our backup task is completed. Again, if we go to the backup volume, we can see that now we have that safety net snapshot and the backup snapshot. And CCC also indicates the, the OS version here that's associated with that snapshot. Next, I'd like to demonstrate the procedure for restoring from a snapshot. There are a few different ways that you can restore data from your backup volume. If you're looking for the most recent version of a file, the simplest thing to do is to just open the backup volume in the finder. CCC makes a non-proprietary clone of your source volume, so you can navigate the destination volume just as you would your source volume. To restore an item from your desktop, for example, you would just drag and drop that from the desktop folder on your backup volume onto the desktop of your original source volume. If you wanted to restore an older version of a file, then you can select the source or destination volume in the sidebar and then select the snapshot corresponding to the date of the item that you want to restore. So simply select the snapshot and then click on the restore button. Now CCC will look at the task event that was associated with the snapshot and it will automatically create a restore task for you that selects the mounted snapshot as the source and the original source as the destination. In this case the original source was the startup disk and CCC is going to tell you that you can't restore system files to your startup disk. If you wanted to restore system files, say you wanted to roll back to 10.3.2 like we have here, then you would actually want to change your startup disk to that CCC backup volume and you would do that in the System Preferences Startup Disk. Click the padlock here, and then you can select your backup disk as the startup disk. When you reboot from the, the backup disk, you can then open CCC, and you can restore from that snapshot. But in this case, let's suppose I just want to restore a few items uh, from my home folder, so it's going to select the mounted snapshot as the source, Macintosh HD as the destination, and I'm going to go ahead and click this little button here to say I only want to copy uh, specific items. I'm going to uncheck everything by default. And then let's just say I've got something on my desktop that I want to restore. I've got this big file. So I will go ahead and exclude everything except for that big file. And then clone. And it will copy that file back to my desktop. and now I've got that file restored right here. Okay. So the other way that I could do that, let's just go ahead and delete this file. I could go into that snapshot and I could reveal it in the finder and then I could navigate to that folder and reveal everything as it was on that particular date. And now I can copy stuff back manually here via the, via the finder. Either method is fine. If I were restoring just a single file, I would probably just mount the snapshot and then copy it off. Uh, if you wanted to restore more items um, or you know items from multiple folders, then it would be easier to do that within CCC and specifying a more complex uh, task filter. Now CCC will show what snapshots are mounted and you'll notice that you don't see these in the finder. You won't see them in disk utility either. Um, you can right click here to unmount it but for your convenience CCC will automatically unmount that when you quit CCC. Now we have some snapshots on our source and destination volumes and if you want to see how much space those snapshots consume you can click on the volume in CCC sidebar and then see the list of snapshots over here in the snapshot table. CCC will list each snapshot that's been created on the volume whether it was created by CCC or Time Machine and then over here we'll have the size of each of those snapshots. Now, one important note about the size that's listed here, this is not an indication of the total amount of data that's kept within that snapshot. 
obviously when the snapshot was created, it captures the state of every file on the disk. So if I wanted to restore from that snapshot, this number doesn't indicate the amount of data that I could restore from it. It only indicates the amount of data that will be freed when I delete that snapshot. And what that means is that this snapshot is the last holder of references to 43.3 megabytes of, of data on this particular volume. So when I delete that snapshot, for example, I would get an additional 43 megabytes of free space. If you would like to delete a snapshot, you can simply right click on that snapshot and then choose delete or just press the delete key. You can also select multiple snapshots all at the same time, right click and we'll show you the cumulative size that you could free from that deletion task um, and then choose delete or again just press the delete key to delete them. I'll go and do that now. CCC will warn you because once you delete those snapshots, you can't ever recover a version, older version of the file from those snapshots. And now they're gone, and that space is freed. Over here in the volume usage indicator, CCC will show the total volume usage on, disk usage on that volume, and then also with a different color, it'll show you the percentage of uh, disk consumption by snapshots. So in this case, 4% of the disk is consumed by snapshots. When you have snapshots on a volume, you'll notice that when you delete files, that space isn't immediately freed because the snapshot retains a reference to that, to that file. Here I have a 2.5 gigabyte file in the finder, and I'm going to drag that to the trash. And you'll see right now we have 27.6 gigs of space available, and when I empty the trash, that's not going to change because this last snapshot that I created still has a reference to that file. And there we can see it, has a, it now shows that this is the last holder to the reference of that particular file. If I want to immediately free the space that that snapshot contains, I can come in here and I can click on that snapshot and then press the delete key, like so. And that immediately frees the space. Okay, so now we know how CCC creates snapshots. We know how to change the snapshot retention policy, how to determine how much space snapshots consume, and how to delete those snapshots if you're scratching your head trying to figure out why you can't seem to free up space on a particular disk. If you have any more questions about CCC snapshot functionality, be sure to check out the documentation. You can click this button here to open up CCC's documentation and you can choose Ask a Question about CCC from CCC's Help menu. We are happy to field your questions about snapshots, so please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. If you have additional questions about using Carbon Copy Cloner, select Carbon Copy Cloner Help from the Help menu and search the Knowledge Base. You can also ask a question about CCC to submit a question to our Help Desk or visit bombic.com.